two sides of the Formula 1 team. There's the drivers, and then there's everyone else. And I was the everyone else. But I was a mechanic and engineer in one of the Formula 1 teams at McLaren for many, many years. Uh, and whilst we all love each other, as drivers and mechanics, there's also a bit of a, a love-hate relationship. They go and crash the car every now and again, and then they just bring it back to the game and expect us to come and put it back together. So that's kind of the way that Perry and I are, and the way that Formula 1 mechanics are with their drivers. Um, but I'm going to talk to you today about how Formula 1 teams become successful, and how uh, the people within those teams are absolutely crucial to, to, to making that success happen. How they do it, and then once they are successful, uh, how they stay successful, uh, remain at the very, very top. Um, I'm going to start by, like any uh, business, because they are businesses as well, they're sports teams, but they're also businesses. Like any business in a kind of small or competitive business sector, you've got to find a way to stand out from your competitors, stand out, stand out from the crowd. You've got to differentiate yourself if you want to win over the competition. And at my team, at McLaren, the way that we did that, the thing that stood us out uh, above uh, the, the competition was attention to detail. And it was attention to detail at a level that, I mean, I can only begin to describe. Because we had a, a CEO at the time, some of you will be familiar with the guy, Ron Dennis. Uh, he ran the company, scary man, uh, but his attention to detail, I mean, he's got OCD. I mean, no doubt about it, he's got OCD. So the attention to detail was second to none. And that ran right throughout the entire organisation. This process has to move eventually onto us, the pit stop crew as it's going through the organisation. And, uh, and as I say, I was very sceptical about that. I remember thinking, that really is the front line. You know, the race team, the pit stop crew, that's the last stop before the race itself. You know, the, the people in the factory, you know, they all have a crucial job, but they're buck stops with the people at the racetrack, essentially. So we can't afford comebacks. We can't afford to be risking too much at that level. And Ron Dennis stood in front of us on this particular day, and he pointed to us, the pit stop crew, and said, guys, we need to find ways to be better at pit stops. And I remember at the time, as this young, pretty arrogant kid <laughs> at the time, we were pretty arrogant because we were the best at pit stops in the class, <laughs> and, and had been for a number of years. We were changing the wheels and tyres in around about four seconds. Now, that was as quick as anybody could do it, and it had been for a, for a number of years, and, and we were the best. Nobody could touch the car, and we were proud of that. You know, we started to go away and analyse what we were, what we were doing and uh, look at this four seconds and try to sort of explode it and see how we could improve things. And I just quickly want to tell you about my first ever pit stop because this will give you a, an idea of how pit stops were before we went through this, this period of change. Practice process, we used to practice once a week on a Wednesday and we pushed the car out to the pit lane and that, this was kind of if we had time. You know, pit stop practice would be the first thing that got bumped from the schedule if we began to overrun, overrun in the course of the week. So that was the level of importance we were putting these things. So I'm going to Sunday afternoon, I strap, I strap, my job is to strap Kimmy into the car on the grid in Melbourne, strap him in, wish him luck, and I then head off back to the pit lane with all the equipment from the grid, the front jacks and the trolleys, to be ready in case of an early pit stop back in the, in the pit lane. I'm halfway back and the cars have formed back up on the grid after they green play. Like you, you can hear the noise of the engines, you know, bouncing off their rev to wait for the lights to change. I'm running back to the pit lane. Hear the car, hear the, the lights go out, the cars launch from the lights, incredible noise that Perry was talking about, bone shaking me down, off they go. Probably three seconds later, the, the radio in my ear bursts into life, and it's the team manager, and he comes on and says, Guys, get ready for a pit stop, Kimmy's had an accident at turn one, he's knocked his nose off. <laughs> <laughs> Turns up, he stops on the marks perfectly, everyone bursts into action, someone takes the broken nose off, I come in with this great big thing. Swing into position, didn't hit anybody, didn't trip over, hit the four pins perfectly. The guy took the catch up and I leapt out of the way and before you know it, it's over and it went, it could not have gone any better, it was perfect. I ran off into the garage just so happy with myself, I mean, elated, pulled the balaclava off and I was just grinning from ear to ear. And, uh, and then I turned around to realise that the car was still stationary in the pit stop area and it should have long gone by now. And what I'd missed in my own euphoria of jumping around the garage was all this radio traffic from Kimmy saying that when he'd gone off, and I can't do the accident, but when he'd gone off into the gravel, a tiny stone, a tiny piece of gravel had leapt up in the air and gone down between his back and the seat of the car. <coughs> now you're so tightly strapped into an F1 car that, that he can't reach to get that out, and it's too painful to leave it in there going to be clean. So that was about 15 people clambering all over this stationary F1 car, with the, the engine bouncing off its rev limit at 21 pounds of the end, all trying to fish out this one tiny bit of stone. Eventually, somebody found it, and I think the pit stop lasted for around about a minute and a half. 
possibly McLaren's worst ever pit stop yeah. in their history. And yet, when all of these very grumpy and experienced mechanics now came back into the garage, there's this young idiot just leaping around in the garage wanting to high five. <laughs> 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 really well. um, it completely changed my, my kind of outlook on this process for pit stopping. That my little bit in that was just that. It was a tiny little bit. And I was never going to make that, uh, you know, I, never, I could have easily made it a disastrous pit stop on my own, but I didn't. But I was never going to make it a perfect pit stop on my own either. Because the only way that happens, of course, is by every single person and every single piece of equipment and every single part of the process, everything working at exactly the right moment, the right time on a Sunday afternoon, and working together with each other. And the only way that happens is through meticulous planning and preparation and attention to detail. We went around the whole car in that level of detail, finding lots of areas, sometimes absolutely tiny areas, that we made improvements on. And off the back of all of that, as I said, we made some significant improvement. And I'm going to show you the video now of basically where we got to. So bear in mind, four, four seconds was as good as anybody could do this process. And we made some significant improvement. It didn't take very long for everybody else to catch up and copy what we were doing, but for a short period of time, we had a significant advantage over the competition. But without everybody in that McLaren organisation, we couldn't have done it either. And that goes, goes for any business. I've said at the beginning, all the one teams are just businesses. So it goes to any business. I hope there's a few things in there you can see that you can take back to your own world, your own business. You're already here celebrating uh, you know, today. And it's a great achievement to get through 100 years. It's an amazing celebration. You should all be very proud of the company and what it's been through. But it's the people within that organisation that make it such a great organisation. And I hope part of that celebration today you all take personally because it, it's because of you guys that the company is still going strong. Thank you very much indeed.